The Lewis structure of hydrogen sulfide has two non-metals bonding together. Now this staircase of semi-metals separates the metals on the left side of the table from the non-metals on the right side. Hydrogen's the exception to that. It's a non-metal, even though it's way over here. Hydrogen, by the way, brings one valence electron each, and sulfur brings six valence electrons each. So what that means is that two hydrogens at one valence electron each, combining with sulfur at six electrons, gives me eight electrons to deal with total in this Lewis structure. I'm going to put my sulfur in the center, and I'm going to surround it with hydrogens. Now, the way that I draw covalent or Lewis structures between non-metals is to, step one, bond all of my outer atoms to my central atom to four electrons total. And then I complete the octet on the outer atoms, which doesn't mean anything here because hydrogen is happy with just two electrons each. Then I take extra electrons and dump them on the center. To four electrons accounted for, I need eight total, so five, six, seven, eight. And now this sulfur actually does have a full octet like it wants. This is the Lewis structure for hydrogen sulfide. If you'd like to see that happen a different way, I want you to draw sulfur with six valence electrons and then draw yourself two hydrogens with one valence electron each. Now, because these are all non-metals, they're going to bond covalently by sharing electrons. So this hydrogen will share its electron with sulfur in exchange for sulfur sharing its electron back. This makes a bonding pair of electrons, which occur here. This electron from sulfur pairs up with this one from hydrogen. Those two are now shared between the two atoms. And that makes this bonding pair here. This sharing of electrons, which gives hydrogen two and simultaneously sulfur eight total, is what the sharing of electrons or covalent bonding is all about. It is shown here in the Lewis structure as a horizontal line for the bonding pair. This here shows you how the sharing occurs from atom to atom. Your teacher probably wants this one, but I think this one might help you understand more what's happening. Thanks for being with me, and best of luck.